Hello, my name is Georgianne Ford with the Alpha Center for Divorce Mediation. And I'm here today with one of our attorney mediators returning to talk to us on a different topic. Um, Mike Ruth is here to talk to us about the, distribute, the marital distribution um, and how that works and what kind of questions come up. And I think any kind of clarification you can help us with on this topic, Mike, is gonna be really helpful. So take it away. Thanks, George Ann. Um, it's good to be here with you today. Um, one of the most common questions that I get from a couple when they come in for their initial consultation is they're worried about their uh, financial situation and, and kind of determining, you know, what's what's going to be mine, you know, what the other person is entitled to. Uh, you know, so we have a lot of questions that surround that whole issue. And so um, I, often I have to remind them that when they got married, that everything became ours. You know, it's no longer yours or his or, or hers, it's it's ours. So we own this stuff together. And that's one of the uh, keys here in Pennsylvania. Um, but but to back up a little bit in, in, in talking about this, one of the, one of the uh, sections of the divorce code is called equitable distribution. And this is where we divide the financial assets and the debts you know, all, all the stuff that we own together. And uh, so they're basically, uh, what we look at in that is is marital property. Uh, and marital property is considered everything uh, from that you acquired as a couple from that marriage date uh, all the way through a separation date. And, and it includes anything um, that it has accrued in value during that time as well. Um, so, of, of importance in this in this discussion is that separation date and people always say well how do we determine that and you know this is where uh things get a little bit gray here in pennsylvania is that now i ask a quick, quick question just sure. to back a little bit so what about material assets that we had before the marriage does that also just become when the marriage takes place if i if i owned a home Right. So what we're going to look at is that accrual in value of the home during that, during the marriage. Uh, we're going to look at that piece that, you know, so we're, we're going to attempt to place a value on it as of that marriage date and look to see whether it accrued in value all the way to that separation date. Uh, so that does get a little bit uh, convoluted in, in trying to assign those values. Yes, but that is that is a good question, George. And a lot of people, you know, wonder the same thing about that. Uh, so we, so we do have to do a little bit more investigation in determining that what those values might be. Um, but of you know, as I was saying before, of, of most importance is that separation date. And uh, here in Pennsylvania, it's, it's just basically defined as when we stopped acting as a married couple. You know, some people kind of look at you sideways when you when you say that to them, but when did that happen? Um, so there are some there's some factors that go into determining that, um, you know, such as when we stopped sleeping in the same bed or when we moved out of the marital residence is a factor, too. Um, but I always say, you know, that physical component isn't the end all be all the things because you can still be married and living in separate homes and you could still be living together and be considered separated. So that you can look at some other things as well as, uh, you know, when we stop doing uh, things together as a family unit, you know, if you have children, that means like hanging out together with the kids, going out to dinner or going on vacation, uh, things of that sort. Um, you know, whether our finances are still intertwined, you know, whether we're still operate, operating out of that joint account and paying bills together, you know, like we have uh, throughout the marriage. Um, so these are these are some things that you know help in, in determining that separation date, um, but it is but it is important in establishing that date because for example uh, one of the easiest things to look at is a retirement account you know a lot of people have a 401k plan through their work right. and that's in your individual name the thing is is that anything that was put into that account during the marriage or any value that accrued you know especially with the way the stock market's been the last 10 years it's gone pretty much up so you know those accounts have grown um that separation date is the date that we value the account on so when you uh, say uh, value if there was value before someone got married and then the value grew from there do you subtract that i'm just wondering right that that value that they came into the marriage with is set aside that's still going to be established as individual property right that so, 
So with the, that separation date determining the value of the account, you know, that can determine you know, how much it's going to be worth. Um, so this could present a problem for people in, in having to make this decision. Obviously, with the, with the way that the law is written here in Pennsylvania, they have created a gray area, uh, which obviously enables these uh, litigating attorneys to make some arguments in, in regards to that. And people get stuck here, uh, especially when it comes to determining how much money they're, that they're going to get moving forward. That, that is important for people to know that. They're, obviously, deciding to get divorced is not easy, but also thinking about your financial future is, is not easy. Um, cause you no longer have that other person to lean on, you know, this is going to be you as an individual. So, so when, um, I'm just wondering in the mediation process, the program that you have, um, I guess that, that trust issue is really important because otherwise I wouldn't be able to sit here and with this, with my spouse and really believe that this was going to be fair. So I'm just thinking how, how much trust is involved in the person that we work that mediation program with. Right. And, you know, in these previous discussions, we've talked about, uh, you know, candidate candidates for mediation. You, you really have to have that ability to work to, together in order to do this, uh, because you do have to have that trust. And, and we do uh, try to be as transparent as possible here at the Alpha Center. Uh, but without that trust, you know, you're definitely this. This could be your first stumbling block. Uh, along the road to making these decisions is, you know, when do we determine the separation date to be? Um, so make the separation date, we establish that, and then we're gonna take a look at this marital property. Um, and, you know, as I stated before, that, you know, that's gonna be everything that we acquired as a couple during the marriage. Um, there are some, some exceptions that are included in the statute in, in regards to this. Uh, so this is, the, you know, the first one being if you have a prenuptial agreement uh, that you guys wrote out uh, before the marriage that definitely set aside different properties that you came into the marriage with that can be excluded. You know, that's going to that's going to stand out. You know, we're going to identify those and we're not going to include that in the marital property piece. Um, a, a second one is going to be, you know, the, the property that you acquired as a gift or, or by inheritance. Uh, for example, let's just say that your uh, grandparents passed away and they left a, a gift just individually to you. As long as you don't commingle those funds or that property with the other marital funds and property, uh, you just set it aside, then that's not considered to be our stuff either. That's gonna be your stuff. Um, yeah. People, people always come into the questions with, well, what about my engagement ring or the wedding band um, as a result of the marriage? You know, is that considered property? And, and that's not. That's a gift uh, in lieu of the marriage. So that's set aside as well for the individual. I was going to ask that. I wonder. So, so that, that is set aside. Um, I did have an interesting uh, case uh, with, with a couple of, uh, with, a, with, with a couple that, uh, wanted to include what they were going to do with their with their wedding bands and their engagement rings uh, during their marriage. They included in their agreement and they basically said that they were going to agree to sell that property and set that money aside for their kids' college fund. So I thought that was a pretty interesting yeah. idea or, wow. or a way to resolve that mm -hmm. um, issue. Um, the, the, third, the third exclusion... Um, is going to be any property acquired after that separation date is established. So one of the one of the first things that we that we counsel our clients on when when they start down this road of getting divorced is please don't make any big financial decisions. You know, don't go out and buy some property or you know invest some money. You know, let's just wait till we get this done for you before you do that. But but let's just say somebody needs a car, so they've established that separation date and then they proceed and, and they buy a car. So that vehicle is going to be there, theirs as an individual since it was acquired after that separation date. So um, the same thing as, as we were discussing before with those retirement accounts. Um, anything that gets put into those retirement accounts after the separation date are that same accrual and value, that's going to be theirs as an individual. So that separation date is you know, literally the line in the sand in regards to these things. Yeah, I'm hearing that really clearly. Mm -hmm. um, 
last thing you know that that might stand out for people is let's just say that they're involved in a uh, in a settlement or a or a action uh, against a party for for recovery of some damages. Um, it, it's really going to depend on when they when the actual event happened. Um, if it happened during the marriage, the, the actual event, then whatever they get from that from that situation is going to be considered marital property, regardless of when the money is actually received. Uh, so it really just depends on when that event took place. What kind of event would you be? Referring? Well, let's just say they got in a car accident, right? So and they were injured and and they got. Uh, they were going to get some funds for their pain and suffering a mm. settlement mm -hmm. because of the uh, because of the negligence of the other driver. Um, so as long as that event happened you know, during the period that they were considered married, uh, then the money then the money's going to be a piece of that marital property. Um, regard like I said, regardless of whether that payment's received after that separation date. So that's that's another thing to be aware of as well. Very helpful. So do you find with when you're mediating couples that that separation date is, is much easier to come to, to agreement with? Um, you know, as I always say, doing through this, doing um, this process through mediation, the agreement that you're writing is one of your own. Uh, the decisions that are made are, are going to be joint between the couple uh, and not necessarily, you know, what their attorney goes out and bargains for or what the judge ultimately decides in court. So coming to a resolution around that separation date is definitely a lot easier. Um, you know, some people don't even really take it into consideration when they're dividing this, that they just, you know, want to do it as fair as possible. And they do, they do take that other person's, uh, you know, future into consideration in determining this rather than going by the strict legal definition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anything else you want to add about this distribution? Because that was, yeah, there was a whole lot of questions that we had that you answered. <laughs> right. There's, there's definitely, this is, this is the point where, uh, you know, some questions do arise. Um, you know, I do do quite a bit of talking around this uh, in, in order to explain it all. Um, but really the key is, is that if you come, uh, you know, if you decide to use our mediation program here at the Alpha Center, we're going to sit down and we're going to work through this. You know, we're going to we're going to be as thorough as you would if you hired an individual attorney to do this. We're going to take you through the same process. The key being is that we're all going to sit in the room together and we're going to work together in order to, to come to an agreement on this stuff. Um, I mentioned some gray areas in in those definitions that we were talking about before, and this is where uh, the price for your divorce starts to rise because that attorney that you hired is going to definitely go out there and make some arguments that are going to attempt to sway this um, separation date or this marital property more in your favor. Um, and the thing is, is that although they might be acting in your own best interest, um, those assets that you're trying to get your hands on, you're going to be using that money in order to pay this attorney. Um, and, the, and that's the difference right there, you know, between hiring a litigation attorney as a as opposed to coming in and, and working with us and doing it through mediation. So it's a big money savings because you're spending right. the money in a different way. Right. On the litigation side. Right. Anything you could possibly gain. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks so much, Mike, for coming back to us and sharing some more information. This was really, really helpful. Anything else to add? Um, anything to Anything that's sticking out right now? <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I think we have I, enough, but I just want to make sure that you were you were done. I, I think I am. You know, one of the, one of the things that I bring up, uh, I know a lot of people have have trouble with the concept of of the way that things are titled. Let's just say that you know this is my bank account and, and I've contributed my paycheck to it. I always have to tell them to approach that with a little bit of caution and and understand that. When we got married, it became ours. And, and you really try to look at it that way, that it's not really mine. You know, I'm sharing this with the, with the person that I married. And although I'm trying to get out of that relationship right now, I still, they still get their piece of it, so. And that, that simplifies it, all the information you just gave us. So thank you. 
I did want to tell anybody that's interested in, has more questions about this distribution, would like more information about the Alpha Center, please give us a call at 1-800-310-9085. There, there, any question, uh, we're happy to answer it for you or guide you in the best way we can.